Aussians, and welcome to the 2021 Oz Club Virtual Convention. Um, I'm here today with Justin Peavy of the wonderful Recap of Oz. Um, I'm Garrett. I'm one of the co-hosts on Oz Talk. If you watch us, you see me bi-weekly. Um, and I'm here to talk to him about his fantastic podcast, The Wonderful Recap of Oz. Um, Justin, why don't you why don't you tell us a little bit about the podcast? Sure, and thank you for the very kind uh, introduction and kind words. Oh, you're welcome. So, the wonderful recap of Oz has is a new podcast that established in February, March of this year, and it came about because of this new announcement of a new adaptation of the Wonderful Wizard of Oz that's in the works at New Line Cinema. So that inspired me to finally read the books, which is something I have always been meaning to get around to and for some reason or the other was never able to actually do and so I'm using the podcast to read and summarize every book and I'm going to share my thoughts on it how it influences the canon and then of course I'm going to compare them to their respective adaptations in the next season of the show I'm going to talk about certain movies stage productions other alternate Oz books and things like that cool very cool so how the first question i always like to ask oz people is how did you discover oz yeah i have always been an oz fan at least since i was a kid and at least in regards to the mgm film because when i was growing up we had the movie videotaped from a television broadcast commercials and all and that's what we watched in the home and i loved watching it as a kid and I remember when I got my very first copy on DVD and we had to keep buying new DVDs because I just kept wearing it out and they just kept getting, kept getting a scratch and everything. And I found another appreciation for it as an adult and understanding its influence in pop culture. And that is how I discovered at least the movie. And then of course, the more accessible adaptations I was raised with were the Disney film Return to Oz and the musical Wicked. And those were the things that I sort of clung to. And they are things that, there are pieces of media that I still resonate with today. And then, like I said, the books are a newer establishment. I always knew that they were present. I always knew they were very different. And I started to explore them only recently in the last few months. Very cool. So which books have you enjoyed the most? Which ones have you enjoyed the least? Very, very good question. Now, I... At the time that we're recording this, I'm still not quite finished with the original bomb books. I've read the first 12. So I haven't read Magic of Oz or Glinda of Oz, but I can say that the ones I've enjoyed the most aside from the first one, uh, Ozma of Oz and The Lost Princess of Oz, uh, those I think are the ones that I've enjoyed the most. Maybe even Rinkatink, I just really like that story, even if it's not so rooted in, in the land of Oz. And in regards to the ones that I am less fond of, uh, I will say that the only two really stick in my head as, as books that I don't really have much affinity for. And I guess that will be Dorothy and the Wizard and Oz. I feel like it's very dark and very bleak. And it's a little bit of a, a severe tonal shift for the series. And then the other one would be TikTok of Oz, book eight, because I feel like that alone is just, it's a rehash of several plots we've already seen in previous Oz books. And in talking to some of my uh, my friends that I've met in the Oz community, they seem to be on that same wavelength. It's, it, it's a bit of a repetitive story. Those are the two that I have enjoyed the least, but I am enjoying them all as a whole I don't want it to seem like I don't like them very much because I I do like the stories and I do like I think the, the canon is just so so fascinating and it's just very cool to see those different layers whether they seem to fit or if they're like wedged in or if they just you know, things like that I, I did have those are definitely the books that just seem a little off to me I always imagine that Riley and Britton after the fourth book went, Frank, can we have a book where everything's not trying to kill the main characters? Right. Because it's such the dichotomy shift between right. Dorothy Wizard and then Rotas, because it's in Rotas, he built in the love magnet. Nothing can kill them. Right. Yeah. Them. Frank, is everything okay? It's like, like mm. 
I always I, imagine like there's some letter out there that exists where one of was just like, dude, you got to pull this one back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one scared my kid. Can you please, <laughs> yeah, can you refrain in the next one? Let's, yeah, because you can tell in book five, it's so much more uh, lighthearted and mm-hmm. it's, and there aren't as many imminent dangers. No, there's not. I mean, even before. the Scootler and, and that line with the Scootlers of I love you in soup. <laughs> I just, yeah. So right. it, it, it just, that's, and I, it's funny because as a kid, I loved Dorothy and the Wizard. I'm not really sure. I don't really even remember why now. I just remember I really did like that book. And then when mm-hmm. I did my reread a couple of years ago, I was like, oh, this is very dour. This, this, th- I don't, I don't like, why did I like this as a child? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very, it was a very severe shift. And uh, I, I admitted on the, on the show too, that I had seen Return to Oz. So I was familiar with elements of book two and three. And after that, I was going in completely unknown territory. Mm-hmm. And that was very surprising and, <laughs> well, and it, very it's funny jarring. Because the one thing I think that Return to Oz really carries from Dot Wiz is the fact that it, it tonally Return to Oz is kind of similar to Dorothy and the Wizard and Oz. Mm-hmm. And yet, for some reason, that doesn't bother me as an adult. And in fact, if anything, I actually really, there's a lot of things I appreciate about Return to Oz, Mm -hmm. but that's the one thing I always, that I always, that I looked at, I was like, this is more tonally why people think Return to Oz is dark, because I see this in Dorothy and the Mm -hmm. Wizard, but it's not really there in the other ones. Yeah, with Dorothy and the Wizard, it's very, well, for the majority, it does not take place in Oz. And I know that the Awesome of Oz doesn't really take place in Oz that much, but Return to Oz does. Mm-hmm. That's fully in, in the land. So you're in completely unfamiliar territory. Uh, characters are returning. There's a bunch of new characters. It's a bit of a, of a mix. And then it just feels like it's constant struggle after struggle after struggle. And like the stakes just keep... I don't feel like they get much higher at times. I feel like in every little layer of the earth that they pass through, the stakes are pretty similar. They're in very, they're high. They're yeah. always in a sense of danger. Mm-hmm. And it it gets a little frustrating sometimes. <laughs> it's like, okay, what's next? Yeah, it's like- it, it, just, it just seems a bit of a, it just seemed a little unbalanced to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so it's it's always interesting to see where people fall with with that one in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, so when and I've, I've you know I've listened through the podcast. How much outside research do you do before for each book? Do you and I know in a lot of cases there isn't really a lot mm-hmm. of outside research to access for right. the books. Um, but how much outside research do you do you tend to do for an episode? I usually spend a day looking up the books and seeing if there are any specific circumstances surrounding them. Mm-hmm. I think the take that I'm that I am using for the for season one, which is the first fourteen bomb books, it's more so the recap aspect of the wonderful recap of Oz, and so it's more just me analyzing the source material so I can get a, a feel for the adaptations, what comes after. And I have already started the research process for season two, which is going to cover several of the movies and shows. And there's a lot more documentation there Mm -hmm. than there is, I would say, in the Oz books past number one. Because everyone sort of knows the story of how Oz came about. Mm -hmm. It's been harder for me to find the stories in between each book as to... Uh, how those storylines came through and the politics behind them. So I'll usually spend about a day or so seeing what I can find. And I don't usually come up with too, too much, but anything that I think is very interesting, I'll put in there in an introduction or in the, in the closing of the episodes. All right. So what's been your favorite part of this journey so far? Absolutely learning more about the canon. I... Uh Like I said, I was very unfamiliar with the majority of the books, and I had always known they were very different. They were darker, they were more political, and they reflected Baum's views a lot more. And I know that the 1939 film has also been at least interpreted as political allegories and things, but I never really knew exactly where it all came from. And the more that I read it, 
it's just so fascinating to see the multiple layers that there are. It's a very complicated story. And for someone who also has never really been much of a fan of fantasy, like I, I never really enjoyed the Harry Potter, or the Lord of the Rings books or, or a lot of um, high fantasy series like that. So I think this is my very first exposure to something like that with the complicated storylines that weave through each book and these characters that pop in and pop in and out. Then from the other, uh, the other bomb books, now this is this Bob literary universe just kind of coming all together. It's just really cool to think about also where the characters would end up if more movies were made after the 1939 one Mm -hmm. in the same universe, like in the same, like with the same actors, like it's, it would be interesting to imagine like Judy Garland playing princess Dorothy Mm -hmm. instead of just Dorothy, the girl from Kansas. It's just very, very fascinating to think about the, where are they now aspect of it? If they Mm -hmm. were to be serialized in some way, I think the stories are very fascinating. Reading them is just so much fun. That's, and the thing that I that I kind of come back to always with the Oz books is how they stayed almost universally timely. The mm-hmm. the storylines, you know, and I think it's a lot to do with the fact that there is such a wonderful sense of other in the books. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Baum, everyone is sort of looking for something. Everyone sort of needs something, but it's it's less about you know let's go fight and slay the dragon it's more how do we get to this common goal that we're trying to achieve yeah it's it's very it's just it's a lot of fun to see that and i know that it appeals to such a variety of age, ages too for the tin woman of oz the uh the author's note that i had just read because that was the last book i just read mentions that the books are really for the young at heart because people who are as young as five and as old in their seventies have sent bomb letters saying we love the Oz books and we cannot mm-hmm. wait for a new one every year. Mm-hmm. It's just very cool how universal these themes are and how all these little tiny bits of wisdom that the author has sprinkled into some of these chapters just resonate. I, I, make, a, I make a very important point to include some of those quotes at the end of every episode, just lines that resonate with me that which i think is is so terrific because you get so much of good bombs really interesting language that he uses absolutely absolutely it's very cool to see more to the man Mm -hmm. that that might be hiding in the in the text um and it's and it's also nice to see to to hear the quotes that are actually bomb and not the commonly attributed movie quotes that right that people, people like to ascribe to bomb right right and you know i there are parts of the movie that are very very iconic and great quotes <laughs> in their own right but they are not bomb's words no um so which character you you've read through 12 so you've basically hit all of the major bomb characters that stick around through the throughout the duration of the series. Mm -hmm. So which character do you most readily identify with and why? The character I identify the most with, Mm -hmm. this is, this is a tough one. You may have to cut this one down while I think. (laughs) Um, I think, I think I'm going to have to go with the shaggy man and it's very hard to explain, but the idea of just, he's a nomadic person. He's just kind of looking for something and it's not really specified, you know, in road to Oz, he's looking to go somewhere and that's when we first meet him. And then we find out more about just his story and he's moved to tears when he's offered a place in Oz and he's so accepted by all these strange people and of course that's just the that's a trope that's very common in these books of found family and and choosing who you get to spend your time with and what they mean to you and for some reason it is really hard to explain but I just think the shaggy man resonates with me a lot and and then you also know that he uh he values his family too when he goes searching for his long lost brother and that's a very hearty reunion there it's just 
I, I, I can see a lot of emotion in him that I really, really latch on to. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So um, once again, thank you, Justin, for, for coming on. Uh, the Wonderful Recap of Oz is available on all major streaming podcast platforms. And you can also find him on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok no relation to the character, mm. at Oz Recap, capital O, capital R. Um, and if you're not a member of the club, please definitely join. You can find us at ozclub.org. Um, membership is $35 for the year as the starting cost, and you get three issues of the Bomb Bugle annually, um, which is our literary magazine. It's fantastic. Um, and we've also got lots of other really cool things that happen throughout the year that, that being a member lets you participate in. So, uh, have a great night, everybody.